Hey guys, uh, welcome to my recent, well not recent, my newest uh, Blu-ray DVD update. Uh, sorry if any background noise goes off. <coughs> it is bonfire night, so there may be explosions in the background, not in the video, but you know, outside. So if you do hear them, I apologise, but I can't really do anything about that. So this term at university, I have spent a lot of time picking up some really, really good films, which uh, I'm going to show you now. So I'll start off with the kind of standard Blu-ray Blu -ray titles that I've picked up, and then go through the collections of like Masters of Cinema, the Disney films that I've picked up, BFI films, stuff like that. Um, so we'll start off with uh, this copy of Don't Look Now. I have not seen this film, and I've heard it's a very, very good film. Um, it's meant to be an incredible uh, thriller and suspense-filled mystery slash horror film. I know a lot of people say it's very scary as well, so there's that. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching that. Uh, I picked up a copy of Chinatown because I studied it in one of my lectures. Uh, I wasn't a massive fan of this film. Uh, I absolutely adored the cinematography and the acting in it was superb, but um, around... I don't want to spoiler alert for like two seconds. Uh, the twist that happens ruins the film for me. Uh, end of spoiler. It wasn't really a spoiler, but some people get annoyed if you tell them that there's going to be a plot twist. So, uh, I know I do. So, there you go. Um, next up is a copy of Dallas Buyers Club with a nice slip cover. I've yet to see this film. Uh, it's got really, really good reviews and uh, highly cr high critical acclaim. Matthew McConaughey is meant to be very, very good in it, and I'm looking forward to him in Interstellar as well. Uh, talking of Christopher Nolan, he produced, I believe, Man of Steel. Now, I traded this with one of my uni friends for a copy. I gave him a copy of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly on Blu-ray, and he gave me this. Uh, I think I got the short straw in that situation, because The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is a very, very good film, and Man of Steel's really not that great. It doesn't have a lot going for it. Um, you know, the style of the first maybe 20 minutes of the film's kind of cool, but uh, when they're not on Krypton, but the rest of the film's kind of ruined by the stylistic choice of doing like a hundred crash zooms per minute because the action on screen isn't exciting enough for anyone, so you have to add a crash zoom to it to make it watchable for a modern audience. I'm not a massive Zack Snyder fan. I mean, I know people who do like that Zack Snyder. Uh, but I saw Sucker Punch and thought it was a pile of shit. Watchmen was quite a good film, uh, even though it kind of like took away from what Watchmen was actually about in the comics. Uh, well, not, sorry, graphic novel. Uh, and uh, what else did try to do? I can't remember, but uh, yeah. Next up is On the Waterfront with Marlon Brando. I've yet to see this. Um, it's part of the Sony Classics collection. And I've got every single one of them except for this one, uh, which is the newest one that they've released randomly. They like randomly released it. Um, they normally come with a little booklet inside, not a booklet, sorry, a little sheet that tells you which other ones are coming out. They normally have very good special features, but I do think, yeah, the special features on this disc are fairly lack lacking in specialness. That was really stupid of me to say. Alright, I got two Blu-ray steelbooks. Uh, the first one is The Jazz Singer, Al Jolson, the first film to have synced sound within scenes. Although some of the film is subtitled and some of the film is sync sound, which is really odd. Sorry if the light's like glaring. Uh, I've got one right next to me to kind of light me up. Um, but yeah, it's so quite a nice steelbook. I'm not a fan of the film, I have to say, but it is a very important film, so... I uh, kind of will go nicely in my collection next to the Casablanca steelbook and uh, potentially next to the Maltese Falcon if I ever get around to picking that up as well if I see that cheap but yeah it's a nice steelbook next one is the Elephant Man now this one was a limited one on uh, Zavi uh, limited to sorry I'm really messing up everything now uh, limited to 2000 copies I believe you can still get it but mine's still obviously in the wrap I'm not planning on um, on getting on actually opening this at all. Uh, this film's absolutely amazing, but it's a limited edition steelbook. Uh, David Lynch at the moment is potentially my favourite film director. I think he, he makes some absolutely incredible films. My favourite film of his is Mulholland Drive. 
but I've also got a copy of Mulholland Drive on Steelbook that's also wrapped up because it's limited to the Zavi uh, 2000 copies. So there's only 2000 of those in the world and I've got one which I'm very happy about because they're awesome and I love David Lynch. Right, moving on to animation I'd say. I've uh, got The Incredibles on Blu-ray. This is one of my favourite Pixar films, a uh, staple of my kind of childhood, mid, early, yeah, late childhood, maybe start of teens, but when all the other Pixar films were kind of coming out. This is a great film, really good, and because I own that now, I own every single Pixar film on Blu-ray, which is what I was hoping to get. I probably won't do the same with Disney, but talking of Disney, I've got the new kind of hero covers of all the Dis like four Disney films, not all the Disney films. Uh, the slip covers are really quite nice, so this is Wreck-It Ralph. I needed to get this. Um, obviously, the, the front cover of the actual case is not the same as the slip cover. I don't mind that, but I did need to get that because I started to collect the modern day Disney films like uh, starting with Tangled I know you could argue it starts with uh, The Princess and the Frog but I haven't seen that but I'm going to go off uh, starting with Tangled so I've got Tangled Frozen now I've got Wreck-It Ralph with a nice sleeve I, I'm annoyed that I don't have Frozen because the Frozen sleeves are really nice as well um, next up is Jungle Book uh, got Mowgli uh, Mowgli, Mowgli I always thought it was Mowgli um, I think I watched this quite a few times as a kid, but I can't remember it at all. I haven't been back to watch it since. It's part of the Classics collection, and it's a really nice uh, slipcase, so I got that. These were all in the buy one get one free deal. Uh, they often do this when they release new kind of covers or collector's editions of the films. So they did the Villains cases where you could get off Zavi and Amazon. Uh, and I've been into H&B recently, and I picked up Dumbo. That was another one from my childhood that I remember quite a lot. Mind you, I said that about Pocahontas, and I watched that film, and like it's it's really freaky and a bit weird, and I don't love it. You know, it's a bit boring and odd. But um, yeah, I got that. And now the one that I really, really wanted, and I'm absolutely don't know what word to use. I'm very ex I'm very happy that I now own the copy of Fantasia because I'm very much into music, kind of classical music. Uh, grew up listening to a lot of classical music. I sing quite a lot as well in choirs. Um, so I'm very happy to own Fantasia as the film that really kind of combines animation with music perfectly and covers a whole range of uh, um, composers like uh, I think it's got some Beethoven in towards the end. I'm not completely sure on that. I haven't watched the end of it yet. I know that's pretty bad. Got Tchaikovsky. It's got um, the Rite of Spring in it. You know, some really, really, really interesting and just brilliant music. And I honestly think that's one of the reasons that I got into both films and music at an early age. Next up is the only Studio Ghibli film I've bought this time. It's a copy of The Wind Rises uh, Blu-ray and DVD. I have not seen this film, but this is meant to be Hayao Miyazaki's last film. Um, it got very, very good reviews everywhere, pretty much. Um, and I haven't watched it, but I saw it in HMV for 12 quid and thought these Ghibli films usually go up to, uh, you know, around uh, like 20 quid sometimes, so I'm happy to own that. Right, moving on to one artificial life film that I've got. Uh, it is The 400 Blows by Francois Truffaut. I think I've said his name right. Um, excellent film. Uh, this I was waiting for this for a very long time before I actually watched the film. I saw it on uh, DVD online. You could only get a DVD in the UK if you imported it. And the DVD copy was 25 quid when I had a look for it. So that was absolutely extortionate for a DVD quality DVD of a film. And then I looked up that Artificial Eye were releasing Blu-rays of a lot of Truffaut films which I've heard he's a great director, I've only seen this film by him, part of the French New Wave of filmmaking. Uh, I didn't know what to expect whilst watching this film, because a lot of people have told me this is a very, very, very good film, and he's a very, very good film director. Uh, but then with the other French New Wave films like Jean-Luc Godard's like, Weekend or Breathless, they're, uh, they're a bit hard, I find uh, Breathless incredibly hard to watch. I know Weekend's meant to be hard to watch, and meant to be kind of a bit boring, well I consider it, meaning to be a bit boring but I found The 400 Blows very very uh, easy to watch and just enjoyable fascinating you know I, I completely just got sucked into everything about it um, okay next up I've got Large Door uh, by Louis Bunuel and uh, it says Salvador Dali also was part of this film I have not seen this film yet I know I probably should um, 
This box also comes with a copy of Un Chant Andalou, uh, the Dali and the Buñuel film, uh, 1929, yeah, sorry. I knew it was in the late 1920s, I don't know when it was. It's a really, really good restoration. I think they used the actual uh, negatives and then have rest restored it. Stunning film, on Andalou. If you're into cinema, you should definitely watch it. And I picked this up because uh, we studied uh, Boonwell and Dali in one of my uh, cinema courses, the uh, art film cinema. Uh, so this is an awesome copy. Of course, it's BFI. It comes with a DVD and a... Sorry about these fireworks. Uh, it comes with a booklet as well, uh, as all BFI films do. But yeah, really, really nice edition. I was very hyped for getting that, and I was recommended by one of my friends, the guy who traded me uh, Good Band the Ugly. Shout out to Harry Cook if you're watching. Uh, thank you for that awful trade. Um, okay, next up, Humphrey Jennings, Volume 3 collection, kind of. The complete Humphrey Jennings uh, BFI film uh, collection release. Uh, this one's a diary for Timothy. It contains a lot of his films, short films, which are kind of like film essays about uh, during war, post-war, uh, kind of around, basically all about war, and they're very interesting films, and they're really, really nicely shot as well. I actually uh, I admire Listen to Britain a lot more. Listen to Britain isn't on this, um, but I went through and analysed uh, Diary of Timothy just because I was interested in it, and I, there's a lot a lot of context in there, a lot of subtext if you're willing to read into it, it's very very good I'd recommend getting this for any fan of cinema and anyone who isn't familiar with British cinema because this is a British film director called Humphrey Jennings you may have heard of him, if you haven't I'd recommend checking him out because he's very very good next up, another film I have seen uh, La Dolce Vita by Federico Fellini um, it's by Cinema Classics, uh, apparently this is a company uh, I've only seen this company make another film, and the only other film that I've seen them release is uh, Fellini's Eight and a Half, which I own. Um, so, yeah, the same kind of... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> same kind of artwork as Eight and a Half. I was annoyed that the top of this Blu-ray was clear, because my copy of Eight and a Half goes... The, the thing goes all the way up in this kind of a weird sort of box. I heard this film was amazing. This, like uh, The 400 Blows, was not released on Blu-ray uh, in the UK at all, and the DVD copy was about 15 quid, and I refused to pay £15 for a DVD. Uh, I did pay about 13 quid for this, I think, in HMV, but I'm very happy that I have it. Um, if there's anything to go by the 8.5 restoration copy that I had on the Blu-ray, uh, that's absolutely stunning, so I'd imagine this is as well. Right, moving on to the Masters of Cinema film collection that I've picked up this term. I've got six of them. I've got The Gospel, According to Matthew, uh, by Pasolini. I saw Salo. Uh, there is a review of Salo on my channel. Uh, feel free to watch it, obviously, uh, if you don't want to... Yeah, why, why am I saying that? I got interested in Pasolini, so I picked up this. Uh, and I've also got a copy of Lacatone. Lacatone? Uh, I don't know. I think that's what it is. I haven't seen it yet. About a pimp, I think. But that's also one of the masters in my collection that I've also got. It's a really nice edition. Comes with a booklet. This one is two disc, uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, so I'm looking forward to watching that at some point. The next Pasolini film I've got is Oedipus Rex. Uh, very interesting film. Beautiful cinematography. I've yet to finish the film. I know I've I shouldn't do this, but I started watching it thinking I'll go to bed when this film finishes, but I ended up going to bed halfway through the film because I was absolutely like knackered, tired out. Um, yeah, this one comes with a nice booklet, uh, DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, very nice release by the Masters of Cinema Collection. I got this for seven quid off Amazon, so if you're into the Masters of Cinema Collection, that's a very cheap one, and it has always been quite a cheap one you can get. Next up is Faust, a film by Murnau. Uh, this kind of goes hand in hand with a, another one that I picked up uh, in the Massive Cinema Collection that I'll tell you about in a bit. Uh, but this um, German Expressionism, I've recently got a very into German Expressionism because of the next title I'm going to be showing you. Um, but I knew that this was one of the key texts within German Expressionism and like the German film uh, kind of boom in that period. Uh, I don't know what Faust is about, but again, it's a Massive Cinema. This one comes with three discs, um, which is nice. One of them is a Blu-ray, two of them are DVDs, um, which is nice, and there's a booklet as well. So that's a, a, another good release. I have yet to see this. 
but I think I've seen some other Murnau films and I've got Sunrise. I think Sunrise is Murnau. Please be Murnau, not Lang. I think it's Murnau. I've got that as well uh, in my collection somewhere. Next up is Harold and Maud. Uh, Mark Mo did a little kind of video on his YouTube channel, like a vlog, uh, actually telling his viewers about this film being released on Blu-ray. So I'm a fan of Mark Mode and I trust his reviews quite a lot. Uh, so I picked this up. It was uh, got released during this term, I'm pretty sure. It comes with a booklet. I've got no idea what the film's about. I think it's something to do with suicide. I'm not completely sure. Uh, but I'm looking forward to watching it at some point. I haven't actually seen it yet. Next up is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. This is the film, the German Expressionism film that I was talking about uh, with Faust. I, I got the chance to see this in the cinema. Uh, during my summer holidays and it was one of the greatest experiences I've had in a cinema because I was sat there and there was two other people in the screen and I was watching a piece of film history and what an amazing piece of history it is. It's absolutely incredible this film but anyone who's interested in film, anyone interested in uh, foreign film or old cinema, this was like, this is like the film that is kind of considered the first horror film or the uh, first film of the German Expressionism movement. This film is still quite creepy. It did creep me out a little bit whilst watching it. As you'd expect with the Master of Cinema Edition, the restoration on this is absolutely superb. Uh, it's a 4K restoration. I got to see it's projected in 4K with the restoration as well. This comes with two discs. It has uh, DVD and Blu-ray, and has a ton of special features. I have to say that all of the Master of Cinema collection have loads of special features. I'd recommend picking that up and watching it. Uh, next up is Seijun Suzuki's Youth of the Beast. I don't know if I said his name right, but uh, I haven't seen this film. And Suzuki was uh, recommended to me by one of my film lecturers in regards to the editing style he has and also the style of filmmaking that he does. Um, he is... I've seen half of Tokyo Drifter, and I tried to watch... Um, one of his other films, I can't remember what it is uh, right now, but I tried to watch one of his other films and I just couldn't. I found it very, very hard and I wasn't in the right mood, but I will go back and try and watch it. Uh, but yeah, I picked this up because it's part of the Massive Cinema Collection. I saw it in HMV for 11 quid, I think. A uh, really nice front cover. So I picked it up. I'm looking forward to watching it. This again is a two disc special edition. Uh, it has a DVD and Blu ray and a little booklet. I'm looking forward to exploring this uh, at some stage and I will go back and watch Tokyo Drifter and the other one that I can't remember, I'll probably put it in the video somewhere and I think I've just broken the box by closing it wrong, damn it, uh, but yeah, another great film. Alright, last film on Blu-ray I've got is The Hobbit The Desolation of Smaug, uh, this is the 3D Hobbit uh, extended edition copy. I've got the 3D version of the first one, which, oh sorry, I just kind of spat on it as I was talking and I had to like wipe the, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a five disc edition of the film. I pre-ordered it. Uh, it cost me 20 quid off Amazon, but it comes with the appendices part nine and part 10 for those of you who have got all of the other ones with the Lord of the Rings and the first Hobbit film. It comes with the 3D extended edition of The Desolation of Smaug. Um, the, three, the extended edition on 3D comes with two discs because it's 3D for some reason, but the standard extended edition of the film, which is three hours long I think now, is only comes on one Blu-ray disc, so that's always nice. Uh, I don't have a 3D Blu-ray player, I don't think, unless the PlayStation can play it, uh, but my, I think I've got access to a 3D TV, so I might try out both of them at some point. Uh, I think this is the only edition you can get. I knew, I know it was the case with the first Hobbit, uh, with the lenticular sleeve, um, but you, if you wanted all the um, special features, this was the only version you could get, so I pretty much picked it up because it was the definitive edition of the film that I could get. Right, now on to Blu-ray box sets. Uh, I've picked up this term, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you can't really see that greatly. A uh, really, really nice matte box, really nice finish. I'm not a massive fan of this series, and I kind of picked it up because I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it all ties in. Some of the episodes are really enjoyable, some of them are a bit boring and dull and I really wanted it to culminate a bit more about the Captain America 2 thing, but that doesn't really happen. I didn't really like it. I picked up the box set, it kind of 
marathon that it's you know it's kind of like easy easy to watch basically and it's not terrible i recommend it goes down in price before you pick it up i picked it up on day one so it was about 27 quid um but yeah it'll sit nicely next to the phase one box set next up is game of thrones the complete first season on blu-ray this is one of the best television series uh, out there today for all the people that like Breaking Bad and shows like that. I I highly recommend Game of Thrones over Breaking Bad. I'm not a fan of Breaking Bad. Uh, I've never really been a fan of Breaking Bad at all. Um, the box sets are absolutely gorgeous for this. Um, really, really nice. As you can see, this comes out of a case within the case and then has a slip cover on top I picked up the uh, first season uh, I absolutely adored the television show I think the cinematography is incredible the acting the writing pretty much everything about the show is really really good top-notch kind of thing and I've been against not against television for a long time but I've never really watched it because I've always kind of had this kind of opinion that film was always better but a Game of Thrones uses film it's shot like a film, but it's a TV series and it's awesome. I also picked up the second edition, uh, second season uh, on Blu-ray and the complete third season on Blu-ray, which is really, really good. Some really good things happen in season three. Um, the most exciting season out of the three that I've got, and I'm waiting for season four to come out um, next year. I think it's February. Right, I'll move on to the DVDs I've picked up. This is going to be a very long video. Um, okay, DVDs I've picked up. I've only got uh, several of them. I picked up a copy of uh, Chris Marker DVD film collection. Uh, I'm studying uh, Sans Soleil uh, in, uh, next Monday. I think I'm watching it next Monday, so that'll be interesting. I've seen some shots from it, and it looks really interesting. Also comes with La Jete. I haven't seen either of these films. I've seen bits of um, Saint Soleil. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. But yeah, I picked it up to watch it uh, as part of my studies. Next up, I uh, picked up a copy of Ingmar Bergman's Persona. I've not seen this. This is the director's cut. I don't know what happens in it. I've seen the first three minutes of the film, which are incredibly interesting. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching it at some point. But... Bergman is a filmmaker I don't know much about, so I decided to buy some of his films to try and get used to him. I've also got a copy of The Seventh Seal on Blu-ray, but I haven't watched that yet. Next up is Wild Strawberries, again by Bergman. I have yet to see this as well. This is meant to be an incredible film, as well as Persona, and I'm looking forward to watching this um, sometime. Next up are the films of Jean Vigo uh, with La 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 Talan La Talan Atalante, 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 think I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not, I've just completely had a spaz. Uh, it comes with a proper Denise, Terry and Zero de Conduit. I've only seen a proper Denise and it's a very interesting film, I studied it again for my editing essay. This is two disc uh, edition on DVD, artificial eye releasing. So uh, the first disc comes with all four films on, uh, so you can read them there. And the second disc comes with a lot of uh, documentaries and uh, special features on Jean Vigo and his films. But I think this is the only kind of edition you can get with his films on it. Next up is a collection of Bella Tarr films. I think I'm studying him as well in one of my lectures sometime in the future. If I'm not, then this might have been a waste, but I wouldn't imagine so because Artificial Eye is usually very, very good. Um, so this comes with uh, Damnation, it comes with Wreckmeister, Workmeister Harmonies, and The Man from London. I don't know what these films are about, I don't know if these films are meant to be good, uh, but I watched a clip of The Cheering Horse in one of my lectures, and I rather enjoyed it. I didn't know anything about Bella Tarr, so I decided to pick up a collection. I haven't seen any of it yet. Uh, finally, we come to the last three items on this update. This is a really big video, and if you're still here, thanks for watching. Um, massive fan of South Park. Season 18 is continually running running out, and um, it's not that great, to be honest, as a fan of South Park. But I picked up season 14. 
this is the UK uh, international release edition, whatever you want to call it. It comes with without episodes 200 and 201, which is disappointing because they're quite good episodes. It is a bit controversial, but if they released it in America with the episodes, why couldn't they just release it in the UK? And I'm very, very positive I saw it on television in the UK when it was released on Comedy Central, so I'm not really sure about why it wasn't allowed to be in the box set. Uh, yeah, but as you can expect with the uh, box set, so it has a mintberry crunch, really, really nice art design. Um, inside, uh, obviously, it has um, the episode Scrutiny at Bigger Balls. One thing I don't like about this, I think they might have done this for season 13 as well, but the, the kind of slides with the pictures on now fold over into big ones. So I think that's uh, when they get help them take down New Jersey. That's quite a funny episode, but there's some decent episodes in season 14 as long as, as well as the Coon trilogy. Uh, and uh, Mysterion Rises, which isn't considered part of it, even though it really is part of it. And there are actually four Coon episodes. And then Mysterion Rises is in another one as well, and Mysterion's in another one as well, uh, despite it meant to be being a trilogy. I think the, the original episode of The Coon is on this somewhere as well. I couldn't find it when I was watching. Next up is season 15. Uh, this season's kind of a bit weird with me. Some of the episodes I thought were hilarious, and some of them I didn't think they were. Really, really nice art design in there. Um, Open up, you've got the Royal Pudding and Tooth Decay. I'm not quite sure where that Mexican episode's from. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I tried to, I've watched quite a few of them and I'm not completely sure. Uh, but there are episodes in here such as Crack Baby Athletic Association, uh, which is a great episode. There we go, the fold out thing with the, I think, I think they're Mexican. He has a Mexican flag hat on, so. Yeah, it's Crack Baby Athletic Association. Sorry. Season 15, some episodes are great, some of them are a bit. Uh, turd, you know, South Park kind of went a bit downhill recently. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the 16th season, but here it is on DVD. Um, some alright episodes. This was one of the main problems with this season. Why the hell did they do that? Uh, I, I was really enjoying the episode, I should never have gone zip running, and then that shit happened. Why, why did that happen? Like, it probably cost them more to do that than to not do the animation why couldn't they just do the animation it would have been a lot quicker as well and funnier like I didn't find it funny at all uh, there are some key moments within a season I think uh, there's the Honey Boo Boo episode and uh, Sarcastic Ball which is always good but the Sarcastic Ball picture slides out to be that which is annoying because they used to have different ones some decent episodes uh, some really bad episodes uh, I find with season 14, 15 and 16 that I can sit down and just watch them all and they're kind of all similar. There are no really, really good episodes and there are no terrible, terrible episodes. Um, but it's nothing compared to like season 7, 8 and 9. Uh, I'm a really big fan of season 5 as well, I think. Um, but 5 and 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are like the best. This is last one, South Park is the best. Then season 10 is quite good, 11 uh, pretty decent. 12 is alright. It starts to go downhill at the end of 12, I think. Uh, no, because Guitar Career is the last episode. Ah, uh, shit. Sorry. I'm just kind of rambling about South Park now. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, have any recommendations for films I should pick up, uh, comment on any of the films that I've got, whether they're good or not, if I've said that I haven't seen them. Uh, yeah, comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, I've been Sam. Thank you for watching this entire update video, which is about half an hour long yeah uh more to come in the future hopefully i'll do some reviews of these films that i've bought and haven't watched yet cool bye